Okay, so oh, hold on. Let me just check my microphone settings. Make sure that I am um, being heard correctly. Okay, I had to... Testing audio? Okay, alright. <laughs> I... Uh... <laughs> Uh, my microphone wasn't working right. I just had to get going. Okay, so we picked up a little bit further down the road outside of... Outside of... Um, oh, God, what the hell was the name of the city? <laughs> Austin. And... Our characters are split up. Um... Honestly, that wasn't... That little exchange where... Oh, my God, look at this. That is fucking terrible. There's so many bugs, especially the further you get into this game, the more bugs there are. This honestly was one of the major reasons why I got um, kind of put off the idea of finishing this game, was because what I had initially started doing was I started making the game, and I wanted to polish up every section that I created, populate it with enemies, uh, do everything except for a balanced gameplay. And I eventually decided, like, well, that was taking a long time. So what I would do instead is create the basic framework of the scenes and everything like that, and the dialogue and all that kind of stuff. And then we'd come back, and I would flesh it out later. Fill in enemies, that kind of stuff. And then eventually I got to the point where I was like, well, you know what, I'll go back and I'll check bugs and stuff like that. I'll fix bugs after. So I won't even bother polishing the scene. And then I'll um, go back for that. But I got so far ahead of myself, I looked at it and goes like, oh my god, everything is so fucked up. I gotta go back and I gotta fix all this, but there's so much more game that I have to just design and put together and everything like that. So I, I, I got disheartened and I just sort of fell off of the project, which is why I never finished it. And why there's so many weird graphical glitches. In fact, this episode, the game is likely to crash multiple times. Because for some reason, inside the city, the map fails to load. Sometimes it fails to load. Other times it does load, and I have no fucking idea why. But what I was trying to say before I interrupted myself was... It's, it wasn't in the script having the whole thing where the Yannis and Zealous split up from the rest of the group and um, and hung back. I don't I don't see that in the script anywhere. <laughs> I think maybe the only reason why I did it was to not have um... oh shit now I remember the reason why. Okay, what I was going to say is the reason why I might have split them up like that was just to not have a long chain of characters. Because ha I got five here. Having seven, like in the previous episode, looks kind of ridiculous. <laughs> not that the graphics of this game don't look ridiculous as it is. Um, but I I remember now the reason for, my, for me splitting them up. And it, it does have something to do with a plot point that is not going to be revealed for a little while. So um, I'm not going to talk about that. All right, so once we get through this door, the game might crash and I'll have to reload. That is an old model. Still calling her Aaron in this scene. Jesus Christ, when was I ever going to fix that? Her name is Bridget. <laughs>
Okay, so something that, you know, honestly, I'm not quite sure how well it comes across in the game. Because the original script really, like, amplified the fact that um, Annabelle is not, like, a regular human. The original script had a lot more details in the how she differed from normal people. I actually had her be much more of a shitty person, too. I ended up toning it down when creating the actual game. But she is capable of sensing, like, a as demonstrated earlier in the game, you have lots of instances where, like, a, a person or a creature or an animal or something like that, when they die, their soul gets released, and it can sometimes be captured into a crystal, or it can go to the afterlife, but there are times when a soul doesn't pass on and just sort of um, lingers in an area. And that's what Annabelle says she can sense. Because of her rather um, supernatural origins, she is capable of sensing souls. She describes it as being able to smell. And it has to do with the fact that she herself is something of a... like a weird, displaced soul kind of thing, because the crystal that you see on her breast here is is actually the part of her that contains her soul. The body is more or less just an animated corpse, in a, in a way, anyway. Uh, and the soul, her, like, the only part of this that's actually Annabelle is the crystal, which is why she collapsed when the crystal was taken away from the body, because... You know, Annabelle is actually the crystal. The body is just like an avatar or a um, a thing that she animates. But have that process of having her soul ripped from a body and stuck into a crystal is what gives her the ability to sort of smell the souls that are loose into the area. Ansel is an entirely different thing altogether, and those he's talked in the past about how his powers are he's afraid of what his own powers are and he doesn't understand them but one of his abilities is that ability to sense uh, not smell so much but sort of sense the loose souls that are trapped in the city The game crashed, and uh, <laughs> had to reload it into the next scene. So you have all the different characters are going to spread out among the city. Not each of them is... Um... Here's another thing that I really struggled with, was the design of maps. I had a tendency to create these big sprawling locations with not a lot of detail or anything to them. So the maps tend to look rather bland and it's easy to get lost here because I mean look at this like right here look at this scene right here there's no it's just a repeating ground texture. I don't even know where all the characters went. <laughs> they just sort of wandered off on their own. But I do know Romy should be down here. Although, for some reason, I can't talk to her. Oh, there we go.
though, they ran into a survivor. Now, there's a couple of different options that may occur here. Um, you can get some of the party members to join your group, uh, join back up with you, if you go and you find them in the city. Because you didn't really... My idea behind it was you didn't know exactly where that guy went, so you'd have to go search the city to find him. And if you run into your other party members, you'd be like, Hey, I found the guy. And he um, he ran off. Can you help me look for him? And then some of them will follow you. I'm not going to go do any of that, even though I think that's potentially a more interesting scene, having them with you. Because this uh, map is proving to be unstable, and every time I load back into it, it crashes. And while I can reload the game, I can make an adjustment and like reload the game and get it to work, the progression of like recruiting those party members back into your group is lost. So I'm just going to go straight to where the guy is, which is in this church over here, and continue the game from there. Whoa, what the fuck? <laughs> he just... <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's, still in, he's still here. <laughs> Why are you still here? And I can't get past him. Oh my god. Okay. Um, give me a minute. I gotta go and... I gotta go and fix this. <laughs> okay, I... I the bug was a weird one. I'm not sure how it never presented in the past, because I definitely would have noticed and fixed that <laughs> back when I was developing it. The problem was that the model for this dude that came down and talked to them at the dock is not supposed to be the same model that you talk to here. So that guy, that model walks up, mentions you, and then walks off screen and then is supposed to disappear. Then you walk over here and this separate model that's supposed to be the same character talks to you and then proceeds into the house. But for some reason I had it set up where that first model teleports to the location of the second model. You talk to the second model, he walks through the door, but the first model remains standing there. <laughs> so it doesn't, uh, so it just seems like he just duplicates himself and then wanders into the, into the building. Alright, so I am going to end this episode now because I'm pretty sure, um, I'm pretty sure it's going to crash as soon as I exit this building, so I'll make the, in the next episode, start up from there. This guy is a little bit skittish, he's talking about the others, uh, being dead, um, from our perspective, the city is abandoned, in fact, Len is the first person that we've run across live or dead but he's saying like oh the whole city's dead which does sort of line up with what annabelle was saying anyway bringing this one to a close